Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Cyril of Alexandria, a bishop, doctor, father of the church, who lived during the late 4th century and early 5th century, most famous for having taken part in the Council of Ephesus in the year 431 and being the principal defender of Our Lady's title, Mother of God. And St. Cyril writes this, we read in the Office of Readings this morning, that anyone could doubt the right of the Holy Virgin to be called the Mother of God fills me with astonishment. Surely she must be the Mother of God if our Lord Jesus Christ is God and she gave birth to him. Our Lord's disciples may not have used those exact words, but they delivered to us the belief those words enshrine. And this has also been taught us by the Holy Fathers. Right? That's about as clear as you can get. So who could possibly deny Our Lady the title Mother of God, filling St. Cyril with astonishment? And so there are some conclusions to be drawn from Our Lady rightly having this title Mother of God. As St. Bonaventure says, God cannot raise a creature to a higher dignity than that as he raised Our Lady, Mother of God. She enters into the realm of the infinite. St. Maximilian will talk about this title, Mother of God, and say, we know what mother is. You know, we can understand that concept, but we can't fully understand who God is right? because he is infinite and our minds are finite. And therefore, we can't really, and we won't ever really, understand who Our Lady is, being Mother of God. And this, the proclamation of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, says the same thing, that we will never, can never, no created mind is capable of ever really understanding who Our Lady is, only God can understand. And so, because of all this, it makes perfect sense to give her the maximum honor, right? In our liturgies, in our hymns, in our prayers, we can never do enough to honor the Mother of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.